Solving a quadratic equation by completing the square. So everybody asks me how I decide which, tec which technique I'm going to use. And I just, I guess the good answer to that is I use the simplest technique I can possibly use. So the first technique I see here for, for this is I'm looking at these values here, the numbers. And I realize that these three numbers have a common factor of 2. So I'm going to factor out 2. So 2 times x squared would be 2x squared. This would be 4x, and this would be plus 7, wouldn't it? Is equal to 0. I'm going to divide both sides by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1, so that goes away. 0 divided by 2 is 0, so I just get this piece left, don't I? Now I'm going to do the thing that you're supposed to do, and what you're supposed to do is look at these two numbers. You're supposed to look at these two numbers. You're supposed to look at this 7, and you're supposed to look at this 4. It's actually positive 4 and positive 7. You're supposed to ask yourself, what two numbers multiply to give us 7? But when you add the same two numbers, you get positive 4. Quickly, hopefully, you realize that doesn't exist. So now I'm stuck for another way to do this. And I have a couple options. One is to use the quadratic formula. And the other one is to possibly use complete the square. I'm going to use complete the square because the B value is even. So I'm like, you know what, I'm going to use this complete the square technique. Complete the square technique starts with getting rid of moving over everything that's not hooked to a variable. So we have x squared here, 4x here. 7 doesn't have a variable or an x attached to it, so I'm just going to move it over like this. And you don't have to do it this way. Some people do, some people don't, but I'm going to just follow uh, kind of the standard procedure for this. Now what you're going to do for completing the square is you're going to take this value right here, this 4 value, and in, in this case it's 4. You're going to divide that by 2, and you're going to get 2. Whatever value you get, you square it. Right? So 2 squared is 4. So that tells us this. So 2 squared is 4. And what we got out of all of that crap was this 4. And what the 4 tells us is what do we want our C value to be? So C equals 4. So the C, this is A, B, C. So we want the B value to be 4. So we, what we have to do is take what we had and add 4 to it. But remember, this is algebra, so if you add, some, add or subtract something from one side, you have to do the same thing to the other side. So I'm going to take my negative 7, and I'm going to add 4 here also. And that will give us negative 3 on that side. What we've really done is added 0 to the whole bit, haven't we? Right? We, our equation is still in balance. Now what I'm going to do is this. Looking at this, hopefully we can look at this piece and ask ourselves that same question we asked before. And that question was, what number multiplies... Times what number times another number multiplies to give us 4, but when you add the same two numbers, you, you also get 4 in this case, and those numbers are x is equal to positive 2, I'm sorry, x plus 2 and x plus 2. And remember, we had negative 3 on this side. In the same way that 5 times 5 is equal to 5 squared, so x plus 2 times x plus 2 is equal to x plus 2 squared. And remember, it was equal to negative 3. Now, just going through the process of solving this, and what I'm looking at now to solve, what I want to know is what's this, what's x, what's the value of x, but I have some work to do first because there's this 2 right here, and I have to figure out how to get rid of this exponential value of 2. And the way to get rid of that is to take the square root of both sides. So I'm going to take the square root of both sides. When I do that, the square root of x plus 2 squared is just x plus 2. The square root of negative 3 is i times the square root of 3. And if that i is bothering you, then we need to talk about complex numbers, but that, this is not the time to do that. Now what I'm going to do is just get to x by adding negative 2 to both sides, negative 2. So oh, what we have here is this. We have, we have x is equal to negative 2 plus or minus the square root plus or minus i square roots of 3. All right, so I hope this was really helpful. It's kind of weird. The best way to do this is just to do a bunch of them and follow the procedure that I just showed you. If you have questions or comments, let me know. Hey, if you haven't already subscribed, please do. Thanks.